Pakistan takes control of a region that some describe as lawless. Fatha of federally administered tribal areas borders Afghanistan and is a known hiding place for armed groups, including the Taliban. So is Pakistan now better placed to fight them? And how will Kabul react to Islamabad's takeover? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Elizabeth Perinam. The overwhelming yes vote in Pakistan's National Assembly merging Fatah with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province would eventually end its semi-autonomous status. Islamabad feels the move will help in what it calls its fight against terror. But not everyone's convinced. Imran Khan will look at both sides of the story shortly. But first, Kamal Haider reports from Islamabad. Despite bitter political polarization here in Pakistan, there was a rare show of strength with opposition turning up in large numbers to support the government's legislation on the merger of the federally administered tribal area known as FATA into the Khyber Pukhtunkhwa province. The Prime Minister, Shahid Khakan Abbasi, told everyone that this was a rare opportunity that showed that the country was united behind this new act of parliament, which will be known as the 31st Amendment. It will, of course, be approved by the Senate as well, and the likelihood that it will smooth through Senate is also a foregone conclusion. But this now will have to also be approved by the Provincial Assembly of the Khyber Pukhtunkhwa province, possibly by the 28th, because that is when it completes its tenure, and the country will be getting ready for general elections and will also have an interim prime minister. So, indeed, a major step by the government to incorporate FATA into the Khyber Pukhtunkhwa province. Kamal Haider for Inside Story. Some have called this region lawless and a hotbed of terrorism. But the country's parliament has now voted to bring it into Pakistan proper by merging it with a neighboring province. FATA, or the federally administered tribal areas, border Afghanistan. Unlike Pakistan's other provinces, Fatah are under the direct control of government leaders in Islamabad through a series of political officers. In reality, the region is difficult to control and has very little real governance. Fatah was declared a region during the British colonial occupation of India. British troops found the area unruly and struck a deal with the local tribes to make a buffer zone between British India and Afghanistan. Pakistan formalized that system after the creation of the country in 1947. Fata became a safe haven for Mujahideen fighters during the Soviet invasion and occupation of Afghanistan in the 1980s. It was also a sanctuary for armed groups such as Al-Qaeda and the Pakistani Taliban during the so-called US War on Terror. The merger means that Fata is now a formal part of Pakistan with the province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, also known as KPK. Most welcome the merger, saying it's long overdue. Others say Fata people must have a say. Well, it's very unfortunate. It's done in a haste without consulting the people of Fatah. It is a strange democracy in the country. They do not give the basic democratic right to the people of Fatah to decide for themselves whether they want to merge or they want to have a province to themselves. This decision is made for them by others outside of the Fatah. Pakistani government forces have been at war for over a decade with armed groups, including the Pakistani Taliban, which has waged a nationwide suicide bombing campaign. Some security analysts question whether the time is right for the merger and if it will stop the region becoming a sanctuary for gunmen. Even though it is being done in haste and there are issues because the security situation is very tenuous in Fatah already, the military is there and we are hearing now that the level of conflict and level of uh, uh, violence that had gone down and attacks that had gone down are picking up again. So we can see that the militants that had been displaced are regrouping again. Other Pakistanis are concerned that the merger will falter because of shortfalls in the KPK's budget, as well as opposition from within Fatah itself. Some tribal leaders would rather Fatah was declared a province instead of being merged with the KPK. Imran Khan, Al Jazeera.
Well, let's now get the thoughts of our guests. Joining us from Islamabad, Martin Haider, political commentator and professor at National University of Modern Languages. In Kabul, Mushtaq Rahim, regional security specialist. And also in Islamabad is Hassan Khan, a political analyst. A very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, Mr Haider, why is the government taking this step now? Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, the, uh, the bill has already been uh, passed uh, by the National Assembly of Pakistan, that is about FATA's merger with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa uh, province. And government uh, basically uh, took this particular step uh, after uh, detailed deliberation and consultation with all stakeholders. And there was a committee which was headed by uh, Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission, Mr. Sartaj Aziz. The committee held several round of talks with the tribal elders and uh, after detailed uh, deliberation and consultations, finally the report of the committee was presented to the Prime Minister. And a couple of days back, uh, the committee report was also presented before National Security Committee, the highest forum which is responsible for making decisions related to national security and the defense of the country. So after that, uh, a green signal was given. The cabinet meeting was called, cabinet approved it, and today was uh, a landmark day in Pakistan's parliament as government presented the bill yeah. uh, with the title FATA's merged with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The bill has been passed. So uh, tomorrow the bill will be taken up by the upper house of the parliament that is called Senate of Pakistan. And once the Senate passed this bill, it will be uh, referred to the president of Pakistan. And after signing, most probably tomorrow, uh, this bill will be called as an act of the parliament and FATA will be formally merged into the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. Mr Khan, do you agree with Mr Haider that everybody was consulted in this process? He says tribal elders were consulted, but were the people of FATA consulted enough, do you think? Yeah, I think uh, I, as for the, the, this landmark decision and this historic decision, yes, I agree up to that, uh, that the Pakistani parliament and the political uh, elite, uh, the political parties have taken a very historic decision. But uh, yes, it was unanimous as for the big party were concerned. But, uh, you know, uh, this process was almost delayed for uh, more than a year. It was supposed to be passed uh, almost one year ago. Uh, but there were uh, differences, even the political coalition uh, of the current government, two main uh, political uh, coalition of the current uh, government, especially the Pashtun Khwamili Awami Party and the largest uh, political religious party, uh, Jamiyat ul Islam, uh, they were opposing it to the Nile and, and they successfully uh, scuttled this process for more than a year. And I think this time uh, the, the pressure was uh, more from the uh, security establishment for the reason uh, that the area is ungoverned and uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it, it is bordering with Afghanistan uh, and uh, so far it is not uh, the, the, the government, the civilian government rate was totally absent there. So the security uh, establishment uh, already they are engaged uh, for a number of operations in the tribal area. Yeah. So now they have to, they, they, they are supposed to come out and leave uh, the, the peace is being established there. So definitely a civilian administration must be uh, extended there. Uh, so uh, th it was not that uh, the entire, uh, there was also a position uh, among the tribal people, especially uh, the elderly, uh, the, 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 they are called the Maleks, uh, or even uh, some groups in uh, certain p uh, political uh, uh, the, 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 the agency were, uh, were against this, this merger. Because this is not only the merger, some wanted it to make it a separate province yeah. and uh, some wanted to have uh, another system like we have the GB, uh, Gilgit Baltistan, yeah. uh, a, a local uh, council uh, system. So there were uh, there were a position and uh, there were differences uh, both among the people and the political level. Uh, but uh, after all, the decision was taken for merging the tribal area into the settled province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. And Mr. Rahim, what about Afghanistan and the view from there, given that Fatah borders Afghanistan, the Pashtun people move freely between the border, and the real problem of militancy in Fatah that has affected Afghanistan? 
Well, first and foremost, I would like to say that when it comes to consultation, uh, since uh, I am a Pashtun and I live in an area which borders the tribal areas, and I can tell you there was no consultation with the general public, but it was done with the political elite uh, who has been aligned with the uh, Pakistani establishment. Secondly, I can tell you uh, we have uh, this Pashtun Tahafuz movement clearly explaining that the militancy that has been happening uh, in the area uh, over the course of last 16 years has mainly been engineered uh, and, and uh, that has been something uh, which has not been an independent sort of phenomenon but has been supported. And thirdly, I who think has it been uh, yeah, engineered, this is a decision um, taken Mr. Rahim, unilaterally because who has it been has... engineered by or supported by? Yes, as I said, the Pashtun Tahfuz movement uh, that has been supported by thousands of people in each of their rallies have been clearly saying that the Pakistan establishment pursuing its uh, strategic depth agenda uh, uh, inside Afghanistan has been supporting all, all these militancy in terms of trying to influence the Afghan context and continue to look for achieving its strategic ob objectives in Afghanistan. So this has been one, but besides that, there have been so many other evidences provided by a number of ref uh, sources that we can reference if we uh, go into detailed discussion that Pakistan establishment has been supporting this whole uh, militancy from the tribal areas, using these uh, tribal areas and its special nature in terms of governance to interfere in Afghan affairs. Mr. Haider, what do you make of that? Has Islamabad deliberately kept the British system in place so that it can use Fatah as a buffer region between Pakistan and Afghanistan? And is the merger of Fatah into Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, how is that going to address the security situation and the security problems that affect not just Pakistan, but also Afghanistan, as Mr. Rahim saying? Yes, well, uh, the key issue of uh, security will remain a big challenge because uh, some of the tribal agencies have recently been cleared of uh, the militancy, but. Uh, Another important uh, thing is that uh, the FATA, uh, they will be definitely, I mean, uh, federally administrative tribal areas. Till the signing by the president, it will remain as FATA. So there is a massive uh, deployment of uh, Pakistan army troops uh, still there. That is to ensure peace and security. So peace and security will remain a big challenge, uh, definitely for the Pakistani federal government and for uh, the provincial government as well because from tomorrow Fatah will be uh, formally uh, merged with uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. And as uh, our, uh, another friend said, uh, that definitely there will be uh, definitely cross-border incidents and they will be definitely firing uh, at, uh, at the border at Pakistan-Afghanistan border. Militants will continue to cross over the border. So border issues, security issues will remain a big challenge. And uh, definitely the, the, the government has to keep uh, the heavy presence of uh, military in all the tribal agencies in order to ensure that the militancy or extremism or terrorism doesn't rise again. So uh, that will remain a very key issue. And other than this, uh, other than, this uh, then definitely there are a number of other uh, issues as far as all tribal agencies are concerned. Yeah. Most of the tribal agencies are, are extremely backward. Yeah. So there are lack of opportunities, there are lack of facilities. So government has to spend a lot of money on, the, on these areas. If there is no money spent, there could be definitely strong voices uh, from these tribal areas. People can stand up in case there is no f money spent on their welfare, on infrastructure development, on education, on health on road networks, something like that. Yeah. On these all accounts, uh, there are extremely uh, no facilities over there. Or if even there is any facility that needs to be upgraded and infrastructure needs to be uh, modernized or built up. So if yeah, these things are not... Uh, uh, attention is not paid properly. And these are, yes. of course, all the reasons why the Pakistani government is saying that they are finally bringing Fatah in to the federal government and under the federal government. Uh, Mr Khan, if I can come back to you on a point that you made earlier about whether Fatah should uh, be merged with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa or should 
be its own province, as some were advocating for. Do you think that its merging with a different province is the way to tackle all of these very real and serious ongoing challenges with FATA, like underdevelopment and like security? Look, I think there were uh, uh, a lot of debate uh, to make it a separate province or um, uh, have a uh, localized uh, local body government there or to merge it with the KB, uh, with the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. But the, but the best option uh, where majority of the people, uh, both in tribal area and the political parties and uh, uh, the, the security establishment, they agree that uh, making it a separate province will further aggravate, uh, the, the, will need a lot of working there are new establishment uh, offices and uh, it, it, it was in uh, other thing was the FATA would not be able to sustain itself uh, as a separate province and already uh, FATA is uh, the, the, the FATA areas is uh, mostly dependent on Khyber uh, Pakhtunkhwa if you start from Bajawal and down to uh, Waziristan but I want to uh, add one thing which uh, my friend uh, Rahim from uh, Afghanistan he said that look this Pashtun Tahafuz moment uh, it was not only supported by the Pashtun in Pakistan. It was in Quetta, uh, Balochistan, and the Baloch were part of that movement. Uh, they were at uh, this stage a very spectacular uh, p p political gathering in Lahore. Uh, the Punjab province and the Punjabi, uh, mm. they supported it. In Islamabad, their stage is set in for 10 days. Uh, in Karachi, the Sindhis and the Mahajas were there. Yeah. So the Pashtun Tahafuz movement, it is not due to that reason. Uh, the demands of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement are basically the basic human rights. Uh, they want to be treated as equal citizen at par with the rest of the country. But making it a separate province, it was not the demand of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement, not at all. Uh, they never mentioned it, that whether it should be part of the province or it should be make a separate province. But uh, the, 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 this struggle for streamlining uh, the tribal region, uh, it dead backs to a number of decades uh, because the people yeah. of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, who are the Pashtuns and uh, people of tribal area, they want to be merged, but later on some, uh, some elements want it to make it a separate province. Mr. Rahim, what do you make uh, of what Mr. Khan is saying? And do you think that the um, demands of this Pashtun movement will be met with the merger? Well, uh, I can tell you one thing. Uh, there are, we are discussing two separate things. One is the demands of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement. Uh, let's look at it from the uh, historic perspective. First and foremost, any decision about the federally administrated tribal areas, FATA, cannot be made unilaterally. There is a history attached to it. Look, go back to the Rawal Pindi agreement between Afghanistan and British India in 1919, where they agreed that they will not uh, come across, I mean, they not cross the Khyber Pass. And then 1921, uh, which was signed between Dobbs and uh, Mr. Tarzi uh, again in 1921, and they agreed that these areas will remain separate from uh, the, uh, the British uh, government. They will remain as a buffer zone between the two states. Mr. And Rahim, then there is an agreement between this... Mr. Jinnah and Mr. Uh, Najibullah. Mr. Rahim, this, yes, area I, of, trying... this area, of course, so, so has a very a important history, to it. but given that the decision has been made, and it has been made unilaterally, how can we move forward now? And how can the Afghan government accept what's happened and work with the Pakistan government in supporting the people of Fatha and the Pashtuns that share both Pakistan and Afghanistan as their home in some cases? Well, I'm telling you that this has to be a decision made based on consent of the people of FATA, which is not the case right now here. And secondly, the situation has been created since 2001, where people have been struck between rock and hard place. They have to go either for accepting the ongoing engineered militancy or they have to accept the merger, which is against the interest of the people. Instead of going for the legislative reforms that could help them maintain their independent status within the Pakistani state, like Gilgit Baltistan, they should have had legislative reforms getting rid of FCR, the, the Frontier Crimes. Uh, 
uh, regulation. They have gone on to uh, take some drastic decisions without yeah. engaging one of the most important parties to the uh, to the buffer zone that is Afghan government and uh, and most importantly the people of Farta. Let me put that to Mr. Um, Haider. What do you make of that? Are views like that of Mr. Rahim going to be a problem for um, bringing this merger into fruition? So I don't think so. There will be any problem now, because uh, as you said, decision has been made. Yes, the decision has been made now. The decision has been given a, a proper legal cover by the lower house of the parliament and tomorrow Pakistan's upper house of the parliament will again give assent uh, to this particular bill. I don't think so. Whatever uh, was to be done, that was to be uh, done in terms of opposition within the Pakistani parliament. Two, uh, pol two political parties, one religious party, Jamiyat Ulama Islam, yeah. Fazlur Rahman group, which has very strong uh, presence in KPK. Uh, they opposed it, and the other one is uh, ethnic-based uh, organization, that is Pakhtun Khan Milli Awami Party, headed by Mr. Mahmood Khan Achikzai. So these two parties uh, opposed this particular bill, and they walked out of the parliament as well. So I think uh, the parliament is the key forum. It is the supreme forum. Most of the political parties have their representation, and political parties in the parliament have definitely the backing uh, with their voters. All right, Mr. So, Hyder. So it's very uh, much the, uh, it's political very much leaders gave done. Their then I would like to go to um, Hassan Khan now because exactly. I could see that um, you wanted to come in there, Mr. Khan. Yeah, I think uh, uh, look uh, what my friend uh, from Afghanistan is saying is trying to uh, further uh, confuse the issue. Uh, uh, that this area was part of the British India since 19, uh, eight, in, uh, 1893 and. Uh, uh, 80, some parts were from 1870 uh, when uh, it was inherited by Pakistan. When Pakistan is erecting a uh, border uh, between Pakistan and Afghanistan for the last, I think, more than a year, and now 500 to 1,000 kilometer uh, fence is already being made. Afghan government has no objection over it, and this tribal territory falls within the Pakistan uh, the, the Pakistan boundary. Three. Look, uh, the people of tribal area, they are part of the Senate. There are eight senators uh, in the upper house, and there are 12 MNAs in the lower house. Uh, and they are, uh, the, 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 they are part and parcel of the country under what Article 1 uh, of the Pakistani Constitution's tribal territory. It is the fifth part of, the, uh, yeah. of, of Pakistan. So I think there is, uh, the, 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 these are just creating uh, confusion. If there was any objection over the Afghan, uh, on, uh, the Afghan government, I think they would have raised it uh, over the fencing of the border, well, let me put that to close, um, uh, inside the Afghan Let me put territory. that to Mr. Rahim. If there has been objections by the Afghan government, have they been put forward? Listen, uh, we're trying to, by using the word confusion, we're trying to sweep the history under the carpet. And uh, I think let's not do that. Uh, Afghan governments from time to time for the last 70 years have been raising and objecting this whole uh, Durand line and beyond that. And they have been, try uh, they have been claiming their territory, which was uh, signed, uh, uh, given over to the British India as part of the Durand line agreement. Uh, there was public gatherings. Uh, let me remind Mr. Uh, Hassan Khan, he knows it actually, I know that. Uh, the Banu Jirga, where people came together, the movement of Fakir Ippi, it is the public of the people because it is public divided, not the government. So first and foremost, let's talk from the public perspective. The movement of Fakir P and the Bacha Khan and everybody. Then coming to the government side, each time Afghanistan has always questioned the, uh, the Durand line and for the times, Mr. Uh, the, at the time of President Dawood, uh, the, the questions were raised. Mr. Karzai has raised this issue. And again, it is the people of the two sides who have to decide because it's, it's not the government's uh, yeah. uh, Demarcated or divided, but the families the on the on the Durand line and within the tribal areas, we have half of the family living at this side and half of the family other side. Mr. So Rahim, let's not forget the history. Yes, Parliament of Pakistan can make unilateral decisions given the context, but but let's not forget the legal side of it and historic events attached to it. Mr. Rahim, thank you very much for that. I'm going to give our last word to Mr. Haider in Islamabad. How is the next government going to deal with this and make it happen? Yes, uh, definitely, uh, it will uh, be definitely a big challenge for the new government because uh, the, uh, the present government uh, is uh, going to pack its system in next uh, hardly almost a week. So the, uh, the, 
uh, the next government is not going to create problem because uh, this issue has been given a proper legal and constitutional cover. So the next government, whosoever, uh, whosoever would be and whatever political party would be in power, uh, it would be constitutional obligation on the part of that political party, the party which will be in power to honor all the commitments, to honor all the agreements, to honor all the pledges that uh, this present government has made in the parliament of Pakistan once the FATA was being merged with the uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa right. as part of the legislation. So the next government will have to definitely give financial resources, will have to give all other things uh, uh, definitely to the tribal areas which would be part of the KPK. So uh, the next government will have to fulfill its legal and constitutional obligation. If the next government does anything, then there will be a hue and cry, then there will be opposition, then there could be a very strong political reaction in case the next government backtracks from whatever is being done right now. All right, Mr. Haider, thank you very much for that. That is Martin Haider in Islamabad, Mushtaq Rahim in Kabul, and Hassan Khan also in Islamabad. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, do go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Elizabeth Puranam, and the whole team here, Bye for now.